we're finishing out the safety part of mathematics and driving, which is why we're looking at how to stop a car. How to stop a car. And in particular, how long it takes to stop a car. Okay? Now, two things, two important mathematical things, have to happen in order for a car to stop. Right? So you're on the road, you're at the wheel, and something happens up in the distance which you realize you need to stop. Okay? So what two things have to happen? Any suggestions? You have to no. press the brake. Okay, number one, well actually, number two. I want you to leave again. Number two, to the, the car has to break, right? Oh, like reaction time. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. So, let me just get that one down first. You've got to use brakes to slow down the car. I mean, obviously, if you just take your foot off the accelerator, it'll stop, but it's going to take a while to do that, particularly if you're you know, going downhill or something like that. But in order for the car to break, something has to happen before that, namely, you have to react, right? So, you're welcome. The driver, thank you. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm going to do the um, average, well, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do the average reaction time for human beings because all of you are being incredibly optimistic. <laughs> the average reaction time for human beings in a car, trying to stop it, two and a half seconds. Now, let me just do that two and a half seconds again. Right? Because you watch me do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, give him that. Yeah, I'm not gonna discuss it. Okay. Oh. Um, two and a half seconds is an incredible amount of time. But don't forget, you have to see what's going on. You have to think for a second. Do I stop or not? Right. Like for example, if it's a yellow light, if you're a certain distance, you are not going to stop. You are going to continue. In fact, it will be hazardous to stop because there's a person behind you who's thinking, "No, go, go, go! I'm gonna ram into the back of you." Right. So you not only have to. Notice, you have to think, and then you have to move your foot from accelerator to brake. Two and a half seconds. Okay. It's an incredible amount of time. Uh, let's put that down because it's a relevant detail. Here we go. Average. Two and a half seconds. Oh boy, at the Olympics, less than two and a half seconds will cost you a race. Okay. Now, in addition to that, the car has to brake, okay? So this obviously also takes time and therefore results in distance. What kinds of things do you think the braking distance depends on? What kind of factors affect it? Okay, number one, how fast you're going, right? Speed of the car. ABS. Mass of the car. Clearly, clearly, the faster you're going, the longer it will take you to stop the car, okay? Um, you can add a whole bunch of other things to that, like does your car have <coughs> Actually, ABS is not really going to affect because ABS is more about maintaining control of the car, but I'll talk about that later. Um, you're going to talk about the, how heavy the car is because a big car versus like a little Toyota Yaris or something like that, different braking distance. But the other main thing, the much more important thing is the weather, right? Because if, for example, you're driving in um, rain or snow or sleet, that's going to affect the surface of the road and Braking basically works on friction, right? More friction, brake faster. Less friction, brake longer. Okay. So to stop a car, these two things um, have to happen and each of them takes time, right? The two and a half seconds on average for this and then however many number of seconds dependent on these factors, okay? So therefore, based on these two things, we develop a formula, right? The formula for stopping distance. The formula, because it depends on these two things, it has to account for each of them, right? So the way we write it is, and you'll find this, I'm not going to bother getting you to open it up because it's literally going to say exactly what I'm about to write. The stopping distance has two components, and they're the ones that I've just um, highlighted in different colors on the board. So this first one here, which has to do with reaction time, we call it, very creatively, reaction time distance. Okay. How far do you travel in that time when all you're doing is reacting, right? You're looking, you're thinking, you're moving your foot to the brake pedal. Okay. That's the reaction time distance, and then there's the braking distance. You've actually hit the brakes, and then your car starts slowing down, but it doesn't happen instantaneously, which is a good thing, because if it did, you'd probably fly out the front window. Okay. Yes. Something nasty. Okay, now, 
How do we work each of these bits out? Um, reaction time distance. So remember I said two and a half seconds, right? Well, this two and a half seconds, depending on how fast you're going, will be longer, sorry, you'll travel longer or shorter, okay? Now remember yesterday I asked you, I said, okay, we did blood alcohol content. Uh, remind me, by the way, I have some, one last thing to add on that um, once we finish here. We did blood alcohol content, and then I said to you, okay, I'd like you to do that little bit of work on um, speed, distance, and time. It's kind of just reviewing what we did in rates, okay? Distance is just how fast you're going times how long you're going at that speed, right? So the way we say it is distance is speed times time. Now you'll notice because the time scale we're working on is seconds, but we'll generally say the speed of a car in kilometers per hour, then just like you did in your previous assessment task, you're gonna have to do some conversion here, right? We'll do an example in a second that'll demonstrate this. But because this is in seconds, you're gonna need this to be in seconds rather than hours, kilometers per hour. Now, then the braking distance. Because the braking distance actually has so many different factors on it, okay? I'll be completely honest with you. 95% of the time, if you have to answer a question about this, they will just hand you a number. They will just tell you. The braking distance is, for example, I believe the average braking distance for a car traveling at 110 kilometers per hour is 67 meters. So this is as if you've already hit the brakes, it takes 67 meters to stop. Okay, that's a long distance. Before we hit the brakes, like slowly applying the No, no, before we hit the brakes. Before we hit the brakes, okay? 110 kilometers per hour is really fast. It's really, really fast. And your car is a very heavy object, okay? So, They'll just hand this number to you usually, but in the textbook they do work through, um, like there are ways you can calculate it, okay? So this will be either um, given to you directly, like they'll just say here's the number, or they might provide you with a little formula that you'll have to punch some numbers into. That's the way that the, um, the exercise you're about to do, it kind of models that for you. It says, okay, here's a formula you can use based on how fast you're going. Remember you said that was the main thing, okay? That'll generate a distance for you, okay? Now, let's, um, let's use that example. Let's say you are 110 kilometers per hour, um, e.g. 110 kilometers per hour, and I'm interested in the stopping distance if I just have a normal 2.5 second reaction time, and the breaking distance is, we'll go with that 67 meters that I mentioned to you before because that's what I looked up this morning, okay? So, how do I work out, this is, the, this is where most of the calculation is, how do I work out the reaction time distance if that's the speed my car is traveling? What do I do? Think back to the question you did with um, those, those two names in there, the, the two women who were driving along and someone was looking at their phone for 15 seconds, right? Well, this is not looking at the phone for 15 seconds, this is just, you reacting over two and a half seconds. So it shouldn't be as far, but how do I do it? What's the first thing that has to be done to this speed, to this rate? <coughs> I've got to convert this, right? That's in hours, right? And I presume kilometers is not going to be that useful to me because in two and a half seconds, I don't travel very many kilometers. I travel some number of meters, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this. 110 kilometers per hour. How many meters in 110 kilometers? 110,000, right? That's what the yeah. kilo means after all. So 110,000 meters is how long I travel, how far I travel in an hour, but I don't want an hour, I want seconds. How many seconds are there in an hour? 60. There are 60 minutes in an hour, and then every one of those minutes has 60 seconds. So it's going to be, you can write directly if you like, 3,600, or I'm going to write 60 times 60 seconds, okay? And that's 3,600, okay? So, uh, 110,000 divided by 3,600, that's gonna give me some funny decimals. Can someone calculate that for me? Uh, let's get, um, say, actually we'll just write all the decimal places here and just keep that number in your calculator. Don't erase it. Can someone give me a number? It's 30.5 uh, repeater and it goes to six. Okay, so it's just, yeah, it's really just five. Okay, so don't erase that off your calculator. Keep it in the display because that means you're working with the exact number. Okay. So every second you're traveling that far, right? It's pretty fast. If that's how far I travel in one second, how far do I travel in that whole two and a half seconds when I'm reacting? What am I gonna do with this number? 
You say I'm going to times by two and a half. Okay, so now I'm working out this um, reaction time distance. It's going to be this number, 30.5555555 times two and a half. Okay, so the reaction time distance is equal to, uh, it's going to be between like 60 and, maybe it's like 75 or something. Can someone give me the actual number? 70? 76.38. Thank you. I'll just do one decimal place. Let's do one decimal place. So 76.4 meters. That's how far I'm traveling before I even hit the brakes. Yeah. So taking the number times it by 2.5. Correct. Yeah. So I've multiplied it, and I should say, right, this is the average, but occasionally a question will say to you, you know, so-and-so is driving and she has a reaction time of two seconds, or so-and-so is driving and he has a reaction time of three seconds, or whatever it is, so just read the question carefully, so if it doesn't we'll just go with this. The reaction time, do we just sort of write approximate average reaction time, 2.5? Yeah, you 2 would, but I, I very much doubt that yeah. they'll provide it. Yes, okay, so Yeah, I said this is how long I travel, how far I travel every second, but I travel for two and a half seconds, mm -hmm. So I've multiplied this by two and a half. Okay. Uh, that's given me this 76.4. But the number I provided you before as an as a average was 67 meters to actually then hit the, hit the brakes and actually slow down. So in order to get, in order to get the total, okay, I've run out of space here, so I'm going to go over here. In order to get the total stopping distance, I need to take the number you just worked out, this 76.4 business. And I need to add it to this other one that's been provided. Okay, so I'm going to say, therefore, stopping distance. Uh, 76.4 meters plus this 67 that's been provided, or they'll ask you to calculate this with a formula that's been given to you. Um, 76 plus 67. A hundred and forty-three point four meters. Does that feel like a long distance to you? Yes. Yeah, because it is. Because it is. Which, by the way, is why it's so important. You know, uh, when you first learned about like road safety and all that kind of thing, they talked about how far away you've got to be from the car in front of you when you're driving, right? And it's not enough to say, oh, I'm that many meters away, because this distance is going to get longer. The faster you're going, right? So that's why they measure that in seconds rather than in B, this number of car lengths, which is what they used to do once upon a time, okay? Where but thankfully, they're better about it. Where did we get the 67 coming in? That will be provided in the question. So I gave that to you today. Um, when you look at various questions, they'll say, okay, because there's so many factors, we're just gonna give you, okay, it's 59 meters, or it's 100 meters today, because it's really wet or something like that, okay? 